Good morning, everyone. It's Kristen Stuckenberg here to do Sunday School with you today. Uh, I'm Pastor Carl's wife, and I do enjoy doing Sunday School at the church campus, but here we are, and we're going to do it from home today. So I hope you all had a wonderful week following Easter, uh, whether you were in school or at home, maybe on a spring break. Hopefully you are safe and enjoying your family and did something fun this week. Uh, we are in the first week following Easter, which actually, when we celebrate Easter uh, at church, there are 50 days that celebrate Easter before we go to the next season of the church. We have been through many seasons this year, Advent, Epiphany, Lent, and now we're in the Easter season. Um, we want to remember uh, God's gift to us that we celebrated last Sunday, uh, Jesus' resurrection and his love for us. So we want you to take a minute and figure out a way that you can remember that each and every day of this Easter season. Maybe if you're taking walks at this time, every time you see a purple flower, maybe you'll remember uh, that God loves you. Or if you see a shiny penny on the ground, you can pick it up and say a prayer for your family and yourself. Before you uh, get out of bed in the morning, you can say a prayer or before you go to bed at night. So we are just thankful that you are here with us today. So we're going to get started. Um, throughout Lent, we learned uh, John, uh, let's see, chapter 11, verse 25, was Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now we're going to begin a new verse for this Easter season. We are going to recite and learn Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. And it goes like this. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created. <clears throat> so when I first read that, I started to think about some hand motions that we can do. If you've been at VBS, you know I like hand motions and uh, singing and letting us remember our lyrics and words through some movement. So I'm going to say the sun, which is Jesus. So we're going to touch our palms. That's the sign for Jesus. The sun is the image of the invisible God. God is doing the L across our shoulder for Lord. The firstborn over all creation. Put your hands around the earth. For in him, all things were created. Let's do it one more time. The sun is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created. Awesome. We'll try to learn that throughout the next couple weeks. Colossians is the book that that verse comes from, and it's the name of a book in the New Testament. It's called Colossians because the Apostle Paul was writing a letter to the Christians that lived in that city at the time. So he was writing to the Colossians. The city was called Coloss. Um, so let's say a prayer this morning, and then we'll go through our Bible verse for our, our Bible story for the day. Um, dear Lord, thank you for an amazing Easter Sunday and week, and for the resurrection, for the love of your Son Jesus Christ. And uh, open our ears this morning as we learn another story about Jesus and about you and about this wonderful world that you have given us. Amen. All right. The Bible story today comes from Luke in the New Testament. It comes from the chapter uh, 24, verse 36 through 49. And it is called, Jesus Explains the Scriptures. So Jesus, um, this is right after Easter. Jesus had died on the cross, and three days later, he came back to life. But only a few of his followers saw him right away. Two of Jesus' followers they saw him. They even walked with him seven miles. They sat down and ate dinner with him, but they didn't really know it was Jesus at first. They didn't know at all until he suddenly disappeared. So imagine you see someone, your acquaintances are friendly to them. You go walking for seven miles, which probably takes, if you're walking fast, maybe you can do that in an hour. They walk with him. For almost an hour, they sit down to have dinner, and they don't realize that it's Jesus, who they already know, until when they sit down to have dinner, he disappears. When he disappears, the followers kind of turned to each other and said, hey, that was Jesus. They agreed, and they ran to tell the other disciples. 
while they were telling everyone else, Jesus actually showed up to all of them. And he said, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. But they were scared. They kind of felt like they were seeing a ghost. I think you and I would feel the same way if someone just popped up and started talking to him, especially someone that we thought was supposed to be gone. So Jesus asked them, why are you scared? Look at my hands and feet. He proved to them that it was him. He did things that proved that he was the same person and certain signs that they would know were Jesus. Um, he said, touch me, I'm here, I have skin, I have bones, I'm not a ghost, I'm real, I'm back. Jesus' followers started to kind of believe, although super surprised and very out of the ordinary. Imagine if we, someone just showed up to us and tried to convince us that they were a certain person that we've met before in our life. It'd be really hard if we thought that person was gone forever. So um, he kept trying to convince them. He finally asked them if they had anything to eat. Hmm. And someone got him some fish and he sat down and he ate it with them. Jesus said, this is what I told you before I died, that everything must be fulfilled as it has been written about me in the law of Moses, which was in the law, uh, Old Testament, and the prophets and the Psalms. All of that was writing that they already had about what the Messiah would do when he came. So Jesus is saying, all of those writings have to be fulfilled. And this is one of the things I was going to come back. And here I am. Jesus opened their minds so that they could help. He could help them understand the writings, the scriptures. And he told them, this is what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the people beginning in Jerusalem and you will be the witnesses of all things. So he's explaining what was written in the Old Testament. The writers in the Old Testament about Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, they all predicted a Messiah that would die and come back and teach them about forgiveness and the love of God and the fact that uh, that all of that is done in the name of Jesus and that it would start in the town of Jerusalem. And in fact, all of that was then done during Holy Week. And this is now what he's saying. You can believe these things because they're happening right now. In the Bible story, Jesus's followers were confused and surprised. They were devastated because Jesus had died. and He was their friend. They started to hear that people had seen him alive. They didn't know what to think. But finally, what made them believe that Jesus was alive is that he showed up to them. He showed up and talked to them. It wasn't someone's rumor or I told them, the neighbor told me I saw him, my Aunt Jessie saw him. He showed up to them. And the most surprising part of the story is that he asked for something to eat. But he's the Messiah, why does he need food? He must have all the energy everything he needs straight from God. He doesn't need food, a fish on a plate. That's beneath him. But that's where they were wrong. He did need food because he was a person just like them. He had feelings of happiness and sadness. He got tired. He was human. And by showing them that he wanted food, dinner, they could believe that he was human just like them. So he probably really was hungry if he was indeed human. He had walked seven miles. He had disappeared. Then he had reappeared to a different group. He was hungry. And um, I wonder if he wanted to show them just multiple ways that he wasn't a ghost. Because he said, touch my hands, touch my, look at my feet. I have bones. I have skin. I'm talking to you. I need food like you. Let's eat. So Jesus was really back. After he ate, he taught them. Jesus' followers already knew the Bible studies. They didn't understand everything in them, so he began to explain it to them. He wanted to help them understand so that one day soon they could start preaching the good news that he was teaching them to others all around. Jesus mentioned the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, all the writings that already existed. These are big sections of the Old Testament and the Hebrew Bible. And I want you to look at a couple of these things this week. So I'm going to list three passages that you could take a look at and see how they relate to the story that I've told you today. The three passages are Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 to 22. It's called a new prophet like Moses. 
second story you already know. It's Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17, through chapter 2, verse 10, and it's Jonah in the belly of the fish. So enjoy that one. Look at, look at it with a new idea. Having heard this story of Jesus come back from the dead and talking to his disciples, look at that story and see what it tells you maybe about Jesus. Lastly, Psalm 22 is, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So look at that with the idea that Jesus had to die on the cross. Very difficult for all of us to know and have God's love forever without question. All three of these are considered prophecies of the Messiah coming in some way. So as you read them again, ask yourself, how do, how do these sound like the story of Jesus? Now, if there's something you need us to pray about this week, please let Miss Laura know, Miss Amy know with email, phone call, text. We want to make sure that you know that all of us that do Sunday school with you are thinking of you while we can't be together and that um, our church, of course, is a church that prays. And so we want to lift up any concerns that you have. Now, we're going to end with the Sunday school blessing which I don't know the motions very well, but I hope you will do them with your brothers and sisters and moms and dads and whoever's watching with you today. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Have a great Sunday, boys and girls. Thank you for listening to this week's Sunday School lesson. And we will see each other this summer. Take care.